Welcome back, modelers. Boyd here with you again, and welcome to another exciting edition of TrekWorks. Well, you can see today that what we have on the bench to show you is a, an absolute gorgeous model, guys. This is the 1350 scale Space Battleship Yamato by Bondi. Now, we've been trying to get around to doing a uh, out-of-the-box review to this, and today is finally the day. As you can see by the size of this package here, guys, it'll barely fit into the screen. This thing is just an absolute monster, but it's a beautiful model kit. We're going to be doing a complete video build-up series here on the channel, and I'm really excited to get started on it. And I thought what I would show you guys today is the unboxing of this thing. I'm going to unbox all the uh, individual sub-assembly boxes, and we'll lay them out on the uh, modeler's mat here, and we'll go through with them one by one and show you the parts, and talk a little bit about the building plan for this kit. So let me get all that set up, guys. I'll come back and show you just a minute. Uh, let me turn this before I do that so you can see the box art on the rear here, which is just absolutely fabulous. It's a beautiful oil painting, which was done of the scene of the ship rising out of the dried-up ocean bed from the movie Space Battleship You Model from 2010. By the way, guys, if you haven't seen that movie, it's available on YouTube. It's a fantastic movie. It'll tell you a little bit about the history of this ship and uh, the series in general also known as Star Blazers, which was an animated series earlier in the mid to late 80s here in the U.S. And it's a very, very popular series and a very, very popular subject. So this is going to be a lot of fun to work on, guys. I'm really excited about it. So with that said, guys, let's move ahead now, and I'll come back in just a second. Get some popcorn, enjoy it, and we'll uh, go through the unboxing of the Yamato and show you all the parts that come with this beautiful model kit. Hang tight, guys. We'll be right back. Okay, everybody, so here we are with the first box that we've pulled out of the main box. And as you can see, they have the main parts of the model here broken down in two individual boxes, which is box A and box B. I'll show you box B in just a second, but we'll start off here with box A. And you can see there's also some more beautiful artwork on this of the actual assembled model. And this is just absolutely fantastic, guys. It's just beautiful. And you can see all the detail that's going, in, going to go into this. Uh, there are some motorized parts to this model. All the main gun turrets are motorized. The anchor chains, the anchors themselves are actually motorized. There is a light up effect here for the wave cannon and also another light up effect at the rear for the star drive. The turrets will all elevate and rotate as well as the secondary guns here that you see on the side. It's fully lit. Our uh, Japanese style uh, Kubota if you want to call it that type tower here is all fully lit. And there are some other lighting details at various places of the model. There's also some animated missile launching effects and things like that. It just goes on and on and on. It's just absolutely beautiful. There's also some really, really nice photo etch details uh, with the railings and different things. So what I'll do now again, guys, is we're going to do this kind of in series here. I'm going to uh, get everything from this box laid out. We'll do one sprue at a time here and lay them out on the uh, modeler's mat. And we'll just go through this one at a time. So let me get set up with that, and we'll be right back. All right, everybody, well, let's get started. You can see that I've laid out some of the sprues here from the first box, which would, which would be box A. And what we're looking at here, uh, first of all, I'm not gonna remove, remove any of these from the plastic just yet, guys. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see these clear enough. We don't wanna risk losing any parts or anything before we actually start the assembly of this one. But uh, we'll talk about these parts as best as we can. Uh, this first one here, uh, it looks like we have um, parts of the main structure of the ship, which is the superstructure and some individual bulkheads that go inside of the hull. We have the uh, uh, sort of the nozzle here at the back for the main uh, star drive engine that you see at the very rear of the ship and a couple of other details there. Everything on these uh, parts, guys, is just molded absolutely beautifully. I'm not seeing any flash or anything whatsoever on any of these parts. And each parts tree is uh, labeled very clearly. Here is a very recognizable section of the ship that you can see, which is the secondary guns there located amidships on both sides, just before, just below the main uh, superstructure. You can see that they're absolutely beautifully detailed, and uh, again, not seeing any issues at all with any of the molding on this. Uh, it's just absolutely beautiful. Now you will notice that these parts are molded in sort of a dark battleship gray. We're going to be painting this model anyway, so, but it is nice that Bondi did that. Here we have uh, 
some secondary pieces here which are molded in red. This is the, uh, I believe they call this the third bridge which is located on the bottom side. That's that extra piece that you see hanging down at the bottom side of the hull. And uh, this is all lighted and everything, but you can see we've got all the assembly parts for that. Uh, and just oodles and oodles of detail on this model, guys. You can see here we have parts of the main Kubota superstructure, that familiar Chinese Kubota look that's uh, very familiar on some of the old World War II Japanese battleships. And some more of the bridge details and superstructure details. It's just absolutely stunning to look at these parts. I'll dig some more out here for you. Um, here we're starting to get into some clear parts. Uh, you can see here that we have the uh, lens that goes inside the uh, main star drive engine there at the rear, which is for some of the lighting effects. We've got some more clear parts here for the uh, bridge details and uh, some of the other lighted areas of the model. And again, they provide all kinds of lighting to this thing. It's almost fully lit when it's uh, assembled. And some smoked uh, parts here, which are uh, to give a little bit of light uh, diffusion in some of the uh, areas of construction. Here we have some missile tips and different things. Uh, you can see that there's some uh, missile batteries here which are actually spring-loaded and you'll be able to operate those to give sort of a an effect where they pop up in the kind of the ready-to-fire position which is really really cool. I was just glancing at that some, uh, through some of the assembly instructions and we'll be showing you those also in here in just a minute. More parts of the main hull that you can see here molded in red. And there's lots of detail on this as well. And uh, these are some of the actual, this assembly here is the actual mechanism for the front area where the, the, the actual anchor chains are motorized, guys, and they're able to go up and down with the push of a button, which is really, really awesome. And I'm starting to pile things up here, so let me start putting some of this stuff back. And uh, again, guys, we're just into the first box here. So as you can see, this is a, uh, we've got plenty of parts to build on this uh, model kit. Now here you can see on this sprue here, you have some of the miniature uh, fighter aircraft that were included with the uh, model that are that basically mount on the display stand right below it. Uh, these are not pre-painted or pre-colored or anything. So you'll have to be doing some painting work on those, which will be a lot of fun. They're fully detailed. Uh, they have extra... Uh, weaponry that mounts on the bottom side and attachments and things like that. Typical Bondi where they go into a lot of detail. And here on the back side we have some more uh, detail parts for the ship itself. All the little secondary gun turrets and everything like that. Really cool. These are all the uh, gun barrels for all the secondary guns. Uh, which are really nice. And again, everything is just so crisp and clean on this entire there's going to be very little cleanup needed on these plastic parts at all. And here we get into some more big pieces of the ship itself. These are individual bulkheads that get mounted uh, perpendicular along the uh, inside of the main hull area. And there are slots in these for the wiring harnesses to pass through. All of it's very clearly marked and indicated in the instruction sheet, which again we'll be looking at that in just a little bit. Some more uh, hull detail pieces here molded in red. And these are the main gun turrets here, you can see, nice and big. Some more of the uh, superstructure area of the ship that you basically layer up as you go when you build it. And uh, we're seeing several different colors here of the molds, guys. Now we're starting to get into part of the uh, display base assembly here, which oddly enough, this one is not included. It's wrapped in plastic, but this is the main... Uh, sides or halves of the uh, display, which is uh, wired complete with uh, an electronic eye, which will pick up the uh, sensor for the remote, which this kit includes a remote control to operate the whole thing, which I'll be showing you that. But it's also got built-in sound. There's a speaker unit in there, and there's a battery compartment, uh, since this is completely self-powered. Uh, and here, more bulkhead assemblies. Again, we have different colors now. Some molded in black, some molded in gray. And uh, just everything is just beautifully done. Okay, guys. Well, it's time to switch over to box B here. I'm going to pack everything carefully back into box A. And we'll bring box B out and lay that out on the mat here again and go over that one as well. So we'll be right back with that, guys.
Well, here we are again, everyone, and we're on to box B now. You can see that we have, yet again, some different artwork here on this box, which is a beautiful full-profile side view of the assembly model, assembled model, and it's just absolutely gorgeous, you can see. Here are some of the uh, effects that have been pictured. You can see here we've got the lit rear star drive, all the lighting up there at the uh, uh, superstructure of the bridge and things like that. Uh, we've got the uh, aircraft catapult assembly there on the side. We've got another hatch here located at the bottom and a view of the upper part of the uh, uh, rearward uh, missile launching assembly. So rather than pause this time, let me go ahead and just move this box out of the way and we'll start taking things out. And uh, this, this box doesn't have as, any, as many individual screws, but we start getting into some of the large items. So you can see this first one we lay out here is the big pieces of the secondary, uh, actually the lower hull of the model. And these are the turrets for the, uh, actually the barrels for the main uh, gun turrets on the model. And they're, as we can see here, these are, these are uh, made out of metal actually to give sort of a simulated brass look, and they're just absolutely gorgeous. They're actually kind of heavy, so that's a very, very high quality item. And you can see there's all this nice detailing here on the uh, lower hull. And we've got another screw here of lower hull parts uh, with areas of the uh, original smokestack and some different things, uh, some of the wing uh, details that stick out from the model. And then we've got more yet to come guys. We've got some more gun details and uh, some of the catapult launching mounting things for the little uh, fighter ships that are included. Here we've got the forward section of the hull again molded in gray. And this interesting sprue here again with another color molded in white with all the individual these are actually 350 scale crew members, guys, which is really a nice little detail. Uh, you can paint those and put those in different positions on the ship. And some more uh, gun turrets and things like that, molded in gray. Here on this through here, we actually see some of the upper decking on the main surface of the model. You can see those holes there in the center where the uh, gun turrets are actually placed. There's three gun turrets in general, uh, the main guns which I believe on the original uh, Battleship Yamato, that it had the largest guns that were ever mounted on a Battleship, guys. I think they were 18-inch uh, guns, which is quite an impressive weapon back in the day. And a trivia question for you guys out there, if you guys, uh, any of you know, if you could name what the uh, sister ship of the model was called. Both of them, of course, were lost in World War II, but she did have a sister. Here is the... Uh, forward deck area here you can see where the uh, more detail will be added and some more uh, parts molded mold in color. These are actually parts of the wing assemblies that actually will pop out from the side of the model. I believe they deployed those when they were um, flying in a uh, planet with an atmosphere when they were actually lifting off or re-entering or something like that. I don't think they actually cover that in the movie but I believe that's what they were for. They may show part of that in the animated series. Uh, here we have a beautiful set of uh, photo etch parts which I'll try to hold these up for you here a little bit very finely crafted and very very well done these are done in silver actually so they're very nice and here we have the main assembly of the display base which you can see there's a vent here cut out in the front for the speaker and uh, this area here is for the installation of the batteries which again as I mentioned it's a self-contained power unit which this model can stand on its own. I'll be talking to Jason about whether he wants to have that uh, set up where it's just battery power only or if we want to connect a power supply to that. I know, when, I know when I build mine I'll be connecting a power supply to it because I don't like batteries that go dead over a period of time but everyone has their own taste on that. And again we have some more gun turret, main gun turret assembly parts and some more secondary gun turret assembly parts molded in gray again. And here we have some more uh, detailed parts. Uh, some of this is just tape that uh, is included to tape down some of the um, 
wire harnesses and there are a few metal parts here for different things and then we have the uh, actual anchor chains which are uh, real uh, made out of real metal and they're anodized uh, in sort of a black uh, color and there's some silver decals and things on this for some more detail on the model I'll have to look a little closer at that later to see what all is in there but just the list just goes on and on and on here for the uh, details that are in this and here we have some bags of various springs and some mounting screws. The springs are all clearly identified and marked as to where they go and some of the springs are for different actions that actually work on the model. So that's really sweet. And finally this last part in this box is more of the detail for the star drive. You can see that's the main engine nozzle there at the rear and the ring that goes inside that. Alright guys, well it's time to get into a couple of the smaller boxes that are included with this kit and also we'll take a look at the remote control unit so I'll be back with that in just a second let me get that set up and we'll have that on the bench for you in just a second guys alright so here we are guys here's a really fun part of this model kit which I thought I would show all by itself separately here uh, this is the box that it comes in but this is the actual uh, remote control that's included with this as you can see it comes mostly pre-assembled there are a few little detail parts that you have to put on this, but uh, it has a battery compartment there on the bottom. But here you can see the keypad uh, at the rear, which operates all the various uh, effects for the model. You've got the gun turret movement. Uh, you've got uh, the up and down anchor chains. Uh, you've got some sound controls here. You've got the activation of the star drive there at the rear. And that's really cool. Now up here at the front you have a trigger, which... Um, activates of course the wave cannon there at the very front of the bow. Now this uh, pistol shape is basically a render from the original pistol that they used to activate the uh, wave uh, gun which if you watch the series or if you watch the movie you'll know exactly what we're talking about. There's a uh, like a sort of a tactical console uh, that they sit at on the main bridge and when they get ready to fire this thing this gun sort of pops up out of the tactical console and there's a targeting screen in front of it and the guy sits behind there and fires this thing and they fire the wave cannon so it was really cool that they included a replica of that into this model kit and uh, just more of the fast fascinating and awesome detail that they put into this one so all right everybody well it's time to move on to a couple more uh, of the smaller boxes here and we'll talk about and show some of the electronics that are included in this one be right back with that Okay guys, well what I've done now is I've pulled out some of the uh, other smaller boxes that are included with the kit. And you can see what we have here is these are the uh, main motor drives for the model, which includes the uh, motors for the main turrets and some other motorized uh, features on the model. Now the really cool thing about these guys is these are all pre-assembled and they're basically modular. So you basically install this into the model and you just plug in your wiring harness directly and uh, mount it and it's all ready to go. The model is basically built as sort of a skeleton. Uh, the assembly of the hull and everything goes on around that and at the end you've just got the gun turrets and everything that just go right up right down on top of these uh, motors. So that's a really really nice design. And uh, this is the box that that particular part came in. Here you can see we have uh, from this box here we have the internals for the uh, display base which are there is some motorization on that as well I believe the ship can move a little bit and you have your speaker assembly here and all your lighting wiring harnesses are in this package with all the connectors and harnesses that go in the various parts of the model with the off and on switch and all the other things the battery uh, terminal clips and things that get installed so again very very complete and very well designed just absolutely gorgeous and um, it all is just so well thought out and well put together, typical of Bandai and uh, Tamiya, which is the other big Japanese model company that's out there. I'm going to move these out of the way real, real quick and we'll take a look at the included literature with the model. Uh, you have here the assembly instructions, which of course, as everyone knows by now, these are all in Japanese. Now let me go ahead and pull in a little tighter on this for you. Um, first we'll start with the construction manual here. Very thick, obviously for the uh, level of detail that goes into this model. 
And just by paging through it real quick here, you see that, of course, everything is in Japanese. But there are some symbols here that uh, I was able to find on uh, uh, by typing in uh, Bandai uh, Model Kits instructions, uh, English translation on Google on uh, the Internet. I was able to find a couple places where they do actually break down what some of these symbols mean. Uh, but uh, I'm still working on some of the actual translation part here. There are a couple of things. With the pictures uh, in general, you can basically figure out how everything is assembled. But the very beginning here you have, uh, for example, the wiring harness that goes into the uh, display base, which you see you have four different wires here, and they, they have you uh, connecting these to terminals. Well, it's a little hard to tell. This is printed in blue and white, and it's a little hard to tell which wire is which on that one. I think really after I got past that point, I could uh, figure the rest of this out as far as just the assembly, how it goes. It's very clear in all these pictures, but that initial setup there, as far as the rest of the wiring harness goes, they'll only plug in one way. They have a jack on each one that, you know, of course, like a phone jack or something like that, or a uh, internet cable jack, uh, it will only plug in one way, so you really can't screw that up. So we'll get that figured out as we go along here. If anybody who's watching this and has any thoughts or ideas on that they want to pass along or has some uh, info about this that may have built one of these, I'd appreciate it. So you can see here we get into where they show the modular assemblies for all the motors, and then we start getting into the assembly of the actual hull, and so on and so on. And uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous, as I said. Uh, everything is very straightforward. Here you can see these bulkheads that I mentioned, which... Uh, mount laterally along the inside of the hull and you basically run all your wiring through that. Um, so as we do the assembly of this, we'll be painting some of the sub-assembly parts and then we're going to be doing a paint job on the outside of the model doing some weathering and things like that as we go. But uh, here you can see you get into building some of the superstructure area of the model, which is the upper area, what they call on a ship. And uh, starting to take shape more and more and more here. You can see everything is built in sub-assemblies. Here they talk about the uh, building of the uh, motorized effect there at the front with the anchor chains, some other things like that. And it just keeps going here. More detail assembly, finally the upper deck going in place, uh, mounting it onto the display stand, which the connectors are located there, which power directly into the model and uh, just lots of small detail things going on here at the end. Now we get into the assembly of the main turrets, the secondary turrets, and we've got a lot of photo etch uh, parts now going on, which they give you up close pictures. Some of these have to be shaped and bent and things like that, but that should be fairly easy to do. Uh, and you see just more guns and just all kinds of little detail going on on that. And then finally we get to the end here, and you'll see that we have uh, some recommendations for painting and things like that, and some small photo watch details here at the end. The main railing, hand railing that goes around the perimeter of the deck and things like that. And so that's a very detailed manual. Here you have the sort of a pictorial, well this is an operation manual what they call it. Let's show that first, which is molded in some nice, or made from some nice heavy cardboard stock. Super glossy, very beautiful. And this is basically an operation manual which shows you how to operate the remote and uh, goes over all the different features and functions that the model does. There we've got the wave gun and the turret action, how to install the batteries, things like that. Now one thing that's important on this model that uh, I found out from doing some research and people were complaining that the remote didn't actually work, there's a little electronic eye on this model and it has a fairly small uh, window where it will recognize signals. So you basically, when you're operating this thing, you have to get the remote control like right in that little window there uh, from a certain angle and everything will operate. If you're off too far to the side or something like that above or below, it won't work. And a lot of people were confused and thinking that uh, here they kind of point that out right here. You can see the angle of the flexion on that's pretty small. And some people were worried that the remote wasn't working. Well, that's the reason why. Here you can see this is just a basic pictorial history of the Space Battleship Yamato series with some of the original animated characters here. Some of the artwork, the artist whose name I can't read obviously, but he's actually going through right here and doing the original oil painting that we showed you on the box art, which is just absolutely gorgeous. And we have a whole lot of information about uh, different people involved in this project. You can see pictures of these people here, the various artists that created this model and 
uh, worked on the original series and probably the movie as well. Here there's some mention that this model can be connected with the sound system included to an external sound source and amplified. So you get loud bass type booming effects and things like that when you operate it, which will be really cool. And uh, just more information about the various artists here that worked on the model. Uh, a nice cutaway picture of the internal structure, which I guess that's worth holding up and showing there. Just beautiful. And I have to say, guys, that uh, not knowing too much about this before I got involved in this project, it's reeled me in 100%. This is just absolutely fabulous. I love the look of the ship and all the detail and, of course, all the features that it has. And, and then seeing the movie itself... It's just phenomenal. It's uh, who could not love uh, this epic uh, space battle scenes that they show and everything, and just the whole idea of this space battleship actually being restored and brought back to life and used to do battles in space. So it's pretty cool. Okay, guys. Well, that's pretty much a wrap on our out of the box review and reveal of the space battleship Yamato. I'm really looking forward to the build of this kit. You guys can look forward to it starting here in the next week or so. We'll be taking our viewers through the entire building process from start to finish and going into lots of detail and modeling techniques along the way everything from assembly techniques to detail techniques to finally painting techniques on this one and it's going to be a fantastic model when it's finished up and uh, so I hope you guys will tune in and check it out guys we're really pumped up here on this one and again something diff different for the Trekworks channel and uh, We'll be doing lots of other sci-fi related models, uh, as we talked about the Mobius Jupiter 2, some other uh, sci-fi related type builds that will be coming up, and uh, things are going to get really interesting over the next few months, guys. So we'll see you all later, a couple days, we'll be back to the start of the build on this one. So take care out there, everybody, and until we see you next time, happy modeling, everyone.